So I heard a great quote recently and it said, people overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in a decade. And this really struck a chord with me, you know, I, I, it made me reflect back on like how far I've come since my injury. You know, back in uh, January 2019, from my hospital bed, coming to terms with being a paraplegic, uh, living with a disability. There were times when I didn't think I'd be able to put my own trousers on. Questions like, when am I gonna stop wearing nappies? It's getting me down, today's a down day. I'm really trying to not let it get me down, but. And then reflecting back on a time where it took me two hours to do a poo, but I was absolutely stoked because the day before it took me three and a half hours to do a poo. So I was like, yes, mate, I've knocked it like one and a half hours off my poo time. <laughs> that was one of the worst experiences. And I went for a poo about three hours ago. I just feel like crying. I'm a bit emotional today. <laughs> Sorry. I was on the toilet, now I'm in the bed and no one's come to help and I've even got my pants on. So all those things I was complaining about, claiming back my independence one fucking poo at a time, man. So, <laughs> Mate, that's a quick turnaround. I've just had a poo and a shower. Uh, I just went for a poo at half past nine. I'm now back in bed. Ready for bed at 20 past 10. Yes. And now, you know, I don't even think twice about like zooming in and out like my skinny toilet and just, you know, no adaptations, doing a poo in five minutes. And I'll just, just like that. And that's basically how I poo. And, and you know, just there were some darker times too when I didn't even think I wanted to live with a disability. And I'm already so upset. I think about killing myself every fucking day. Luckily, I managed to, to get past that. So all these little wins were incredible. And sometimes they just accumulate over time. And it's not until you stop and look back at how far you've come, you know, you realize just how much you've achieved. I've made so much progress. I forget um, where I was a week ago and where I am now and how much further I've got to go. So it actually inspired me to look back at some of my old vlogs and I'm really glad that I uh, kept a record of like what I was doing back then. I remember when I found out that you were supposed to wheelie down steep hills and I was like, what? There's no way you can do that. That's, that's mad. But you're glad I practice my wheelies now, aren't you, mum? Hey? And now I wheelie everywhere, you know, like my wheelchair skills are just, you know, pretty good because, you know, I get a lot of practice. I'm always in the bloody thing. Yeah, there are so many wheelchair skills I never thought I would uh, get to master. You know, like the floor transfer and all these other things that, that just, I you know, I can do these now and, and they don't even, I don't get scared of, of them. And So these days I'm really independent and my comfort zone has grown so much like from where it used to be. It used to be like just my hospital bed, like even getting out of the hospital bed was, was terrifying. And then it was like the toilet and then the corridor and then the rehab center, even just going outside, that was terrifying. If things can be this hard here in this rehabilitation center, then how fucking hard is it gonna be in the real world, you know? Now, you know, I can drive, I've got the freedom of the car, I can live independently, and all these, 
huge leaps and bounds where I've come, like from where I was to where I am now. It's really wonderful actually, like to, to reflect back on just how far I've come. So there are still things that scare me these days, like uh, integrating with the disabled community here, the language barrier, you know, the weather. I still live in a fairly small comfort zone. I mean, it's still a lot bigger than it used to be, but I've still got a long way to go. So there's a book I read in my 20s called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And while it does sound a little bit cheesy, it, the core message in the book is that anytime you do something for the first time, you'll feel fear. And if you wait for the fear to go away before you do something, you'll never end up doing it, hence the title. So in order to make the fear go away, you first have to do the thing that you're scared of. Like the outside world is scaring me less and less every time I go out in there. I'm really scared of something, I do it, it's not that hard, I do it again, it's not, it's even easier. The, the world is a tiny bit less scary now. And this may seem oversimplified and obvious, but I still need reminding of that every now and then. That really tough emotional day was there to give me motivation the next day. So yeah, the first time going anywhere in a wheelchair is quite daunting, but the second time, not so much. And like I say, every time you expand your comfort zone a little bit, these accumulate over time. So I'm reminded of that quote again, like what can I achieve in a decade? If I've come this far in the last two years since my injury, what is my life gonna look like in another eight years? And obviously this remains to be seen, but if you zoom out on your life and see how far you've come in the last 10 years, what do you think your life's gonna look like in the next 10? Sometimes we're so focused on tomorrow or next week, we forget to zoom out on the bigger picture that is our life, you know, it's it, and, and our future. Do you remember what your phone looked like 10 years ago? I mean, look around you, is there anything in the room that you're in that is still there from 10 years ago? Uh, if so, like, does it look the same? There is literally nothing in this room that I had 10 years ago, apart from this body, and you know, that seems to change the world. Half of it doesn't bloody work anymore, you know? Like what can you look around and see right now that you can guarantee that you'll have in 10 years time? Nothing is guaranteed apart from death and taxes. As the saying goes, everything is guaranteed to change. But I think it's important to remember that we can shape our future and instead of just drifting through the ocean of life, we can set sail and we can create a, a map and figure out where we want to go. But sometimes that's the most difficult question. Perhaps in 10 years time, I'll be fluent in French and I'll be in the Paralympics. <laughs> or perhaps I'll be a daddy or maybe I'll still be making silly YouTube videos, who knows? But if you could achieve anything in this lifetime, what would it be? If you knew you couldn't fail, what would you try? Finding the answer to these questions can be tough and they require a lot of soul searching and introspection. Or perhaps you know the answer, but you're just scared to take the first step. So if we want the next decade to be new and exciting, then it seems we have to push outside of our comfort zone together. Try new things, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. Just like Susan Jeffers said. <laughs> anyway. Hope this has given you food for thought. Let me know in the comments if there's something that you want to achieve in the next 10 years. I hope you found this helpful. As always, love yourselves and each other. Uh, also, just a quick note, I just want to really say thank you for the lovely comments on my last video. They were so, so kind and really just, they really made me feel really wonderful. Like one guy commented and said like I was one of his favorite YouTubers and they were just, really heartwarming, beautiful, lovely comments. So thank you guys. They really mean the world to me. Thanks a lot. Anyway, see ya. Peace. Which is great because who doesn't love a guy that stinks of piss? That's me. Brilliant. <sighs> you know what they say about a man in this situation? You're in trouble. <laughs> Stop it.